Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar um, on uh, principles and practices of open data sharing. Um, maybe I'm not sure if we should wait just a few minutes uh, to wait for other people to join. Um, but in the meantime, I can start presenting uh, the presenter. Um, Michael uh, Morgi will be uh, presenting uh, this webinar. He is um, the Monitoring and Evaluation Coordination at PEP. He has been a member of two PEP research project teams. One of these research teams has successfully published their data following their participation in the International Development Research Center Open Research Data Initiative. So he has uh, quite an experience on data publishing and sharing, and I think he can give us a um, very good perspective on how to uh, uh, proceed when we want to uh, share uh, with data from, from our research. So I think Michael, maybe you can start if you want to present yourself or thank you Carmen a good morning good afternoon to all of us uh, thank you for for joining the the webinar uh, and I'll go straight to my presentation uh, I know that uh, we are all familiar with the idea that uh, publishing research articles is a critical part of the advance advancement of uh, the career of any researcher. However, uh, very few researchers think that it is important to publish the data that was collected to produce the research articles. And actually, uh, within the research community, very few people appreciate that we need to go beyond methodology and results. Uh, pe many people think that once the methodology and the results are clear, uh, then they are good to go. But uh, uh, right now we have what is referred to as the open access movement. I'm sure some, some of you know about it. And uh, uh, open access, it has various tenets and one of the tenets is to provide uh, freely uh, and online, that is uh, the, the, the intellectual outputs of any research. And uh, here at PEP, we have what we refer to as PEP open access and data management policy. And uh, in the policy, we do commit to provide freely and publicly all research and policy outputs from uh, PEP uh, researchers or PEP research teams. And uh, that can easily uh, be, be found on the PEP website. And uh, uh, straight to my slides, We need to ask ourselves, why is uh, sharing data important? And uh, data is a public good. As we know, uh, most of research and data collection is public, publicly funded. And it's only good uh, for the interest of the donors and the various uh, funders of research and data collection that data is uh, not just used by the teams or the research teams that have collected the data, it should also be accessible for reuse by other researchers. So it, it is indeed a, a public and should be a public good. And uh, other researchers may want to use your data for various reasons. First is to contextualize your published article. Once a researcher gets hold of your article, they may also be interested in the data uh, from which uh, the article uh, uh, is based. And then uh, replication of your study. Right now in the research community, we talk of reproducibility or replicability in research. And then they may also be interested in developing their own research based on the data that you have collected. And also they, they may also want to incorporate your data into a 
larger data set or use multiple data sets together. So uh, one of your data set or your data as part of multiple data sets that is uh, used by other researchers for their analysis and their research work. And then um, uh, some selfish or a selfish reason here, it, it's, it's also that uh, data sharing also promotes uh, recognition of visibility of you as a researcher and of your research work, which may end up opening new possibilities of collaboration, which may be of help and use to you as a researcher. Then um, there are several ways or options of uh, data sharing. Some of them are private, others are public. Uh, like we do have email, which we know uh, most of the times it happens on request. Then we have supplementary files. These are usually requested as part of uh, uh, journal submissions. Then we have personal and institutional website. And maybe here I can give uh, the example of uh, the PEP institutional uh, data repository, which is accessible uh, on the PEP website. You just need to go to the website and tab on publications. There you'll find data sets. And from there, you can be able to view uh, some of the data sets that have been collected by uh, research, uh, PEP researchers. And uh, mostly that is from two thematic research groups. That is uh, the community-based monitoring system, uh, CBMS, and uh, the experimental research group that is PERI. Though you will also find other external uh, data sets in the PEP repository. So that's just an example. And beyond an institutional data repository, we also have uh, external data repository, what I have called here a trustworthy data repository because they need to be trustworthy then uh, you can also share data uh, via a data paper. We are going to discuss uh, some of these uh, ways uh, shortly. Then, um, as we know, access does not necessarily mean that you have permission or one has permission to use uh, data or whatever uh, uh, creative work or contents. And so uh, as a researcher, you need to provide terms of use on how your data can or can't be used. And some of the rules and guidelines that you could give for reuse uh, relate to institution countries and regions where data can be reused. There are some who say that their data should be used uh, by uh, or, or, or in, uh, in developing countries. Uh, you could also give guidelines regarding the persons that can reuse the data. Uh, could be uh, bona fide researchers uh, as opposed to private citizens. There are also there are some who require that data can only be used by student researchers. And also we know that um, we are now in the era of what is known as data analytics. Uh, any data is now useful for commercial or business reasons, and you may want to permit or limit the commercial use of your data. And then um, other researchers, or you may require other researchers to implicitly agree to your terms of use, what we are referring to as uh, the terms and conditions of uh, uh, the reuse of your data when accessing the data, or uh, they, they may respond to a pop-up. Like for uh, when you visit the PEP data repository, we will require you to fill a data request form. Uh, so, and uh, in the form, of course, we have uh, stipulated the terms and conditions of reuse of uh, uh, PEP data. Then one of the ways of exercising terms of use of data is what we refer to as uh, data licensing. A data license is just uh, a legal instrument to manage uh, copyrights. And uh, usually, uh, 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 license agreements are mostly applied uh, by data repositories. Uh, and uh, a data repository usually have various forms of uh, data or types of data licenses. licenses. And the most common are what we refer to as a creative common licenses, which is uh, a simple and standard format for licensing content. Creative common licenses are released by an American um, not-for-profit 
uh, called Creative uh, Commons that was uh, founded in two, 2001 and uh, they are devoted to uh, and advancing or widening access and use of not just the data, but all content, all creative works. And uh, we have various uh, types of uh, creative common licenses. Uh, we have what, uh, what is, these are just a few examples. We have what is called CC attribution, uh, uh, also abbreviated as a CC by, and uh, these mandates attribution you are required that if you, uh, you are using a data that is uh, under the terms in CC BY, uh, you are required to attribute or to cite, you acknowledge the data creator, the people who generated the data. Then another CC license is a CC non-commercial, abbreviated as a CC, uh, CCNC, and this usually um, proscribes any commercial use of data. And then we have another uh, CC uh, no derivatives abbreviated as CCND, which prohibits production and especially sharing of derivable or uh, derivatives of your data. And then uh, we have CC share alike uh, abbreviated as CCSA, which allows a use if at all derivatives or other derivatives from your data are licensed under the same terms. And, and maybe just to say that um, usually there are so many re releases um, and uh, the differences in these releases uh, or the release of various uh, Creative Commons licenses is in the rights uh, that one is allowed or that one is uh, denied in terms of use of data. And as I said, uh, these licenses don't just apply to data, they, ref they apply to all, all content, other creative works. Uh, and I say that because I know some of you may have found uh, these elsewhere, maybe on some website and so, and so on. And then um, we have what uh, is referred to as metadata or referred to as metadata which is basically data about data, which basically, uh, which is basically information describing your data. And uh, we have various examples of metadata. There can be too many. I've just stated some examples here. Title, title of your data set. And maybe here I can mention that um, uh, the title of your data set may not necessarily be uh, the title of your research project. For example, if, if, if your uh, research study was the impact of saving groups on socioeconomic, um, uh, on women's socioeconomic empowerment in Kenya, uh, your data set would go by a different title, such as a household a socioeconomic uh, data set uh, uh, from maybe Uganda surveyed in the year, blah, 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 and all that. So my point is, uh, the title of your data set could be different from the title of your paper or your research study. And then uh, some other metadata could relate to the data set creators, maybe uh, uh, names and affiliations of uh, the re research team that was involved in uh, the creation or generation of the data set. Then we could also have uh, metadata relating to the contents of the data set. We know that uh, in a database, you could have uh, different types of data, maybe data uh, related to household characteristics, data on agricultural production and marketing, data on uh, education, data on water and sanitation, data in, in peace and order, you know, all those, all, all those um, data that we collect in, uh, in, in a survey. Okay, so you need to describe the contents of that database or data set. And then uh, metadata, we could also have metadata uh, about uh, the data sets related publications, okay? We know that uh, you could have published some uh, research articles from your data. So maybe you need to mention that as some of the information or in some of that information that we use to describe your data. And then uh, uh, here, 
I, I have given uh, differences in uh, what uh, 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 differences between uh, various journals, uh, repositories. Um, okay, what we are familiar with, that is a typical research journal, the typical data repository, and what we also refer to as a data uh, journal. Uh, and um, for our research journal, we know that uh, data set checking may be available as additional paid service. It's, it's not usually a priority, but for typical data repository, uh, your data files have to be reviewed by the repository staff for the technical integrity of your data and any violation of uh, the, their repository conditions of use. And then for uh, data journal, uh, data curation, data checking is a must. It's offered as part of the normal data journal workflow. And then uh, the other difference uh, between uh, the, the three uh, journals or the three sources uh, it, it comes uh, from um, the, the 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 fact that uh, for a research journal you are allowed to uh, or you, you could request to see data but uh, for a data repository um, they do facilitate or they may facilitate a peer review of your data before it's publicly available but for a data journal uh, data must be subjected to peer review and then for a research journal, uh, data re referencing may not be allowed, but for a data repository, uh, they may provide guidance on uh, how your data can be cited. And uh, for a data journal, uh, usually uh, the journal staff require that your data is correctly cited. Another key difference between uh, uh, the, the three is that uh, from a research journal, usually uh, the output is a citable scholarly article, but uh, from the process of publishing data in data repository, you get a citable data set. And from a data journal, you get a citable data article. And then, um, I now uh, describe the process or the steps that you follow in publishing with a data journal. Here, you will note that uh, I'll talk about uh, the data repository and also about the data journal, because uh, for you to publish in any data journal, you must first deposit your data in an appropriate repository. Then after that, you will be required to draft what uh, is referred to as a data descriptor or a manuscript. And usually uh, these uh, uh, journals and uh, repositories, um, th they will give you uh, a template. All of them, they have uh, uh, templates, standardized templates that uh, they give uh, researchers who may be interested in uh, depositing their data with them or publishing their data with them. After that, uh, you are required to fill the manuscript and you submit it. It undergoes some uh, uh, peer review. And then uh, the data sets that you present uh, are reviewed by data curators. Data curation is very, very important. This is the process of preparing data for publishing. And one of the things that they check is what we refer to as uh, data anonymization or the identification. Remember, when you are collecting data, you um, you agree to comply or to uh, to play by the rules of what is referred to as a, the, the the subject confidentiality, basically uh, subject privacy, and uh, that must be safeguarded throughout the process. And maybe I may mention that. Uh, the identification does not is, is goes beyond just deleting the names of uh, the, the, the subjects. Uh, because if, for example, you decide to delete the names, but then you, you leave uh, other information, for example, the household location, uh, maybe age, and maybe someone is familiar with 
that other information, they can as well manage to uh, identify whom these subjects are. So uh, uh, data curation is very, very important uh, before any data is published. published. And then um, uh, after undergoing the peer review and review by the data curators, uh, your manuscript uh, uh, will, will um, of course, you, you'll be expected to, to do the revisions based on the comments that, that you get. And after you revise, then you can present uh, the, the revised manuscript for uh, publication, which will be now the final process. From then, uh, uh, the data descript uh, descriptor is referred to as a data paper. And then, uh, as I said, different data journals have uh, uh, different structures of uh, data descriptor or manuscript. Uh, but uh, usually uh, there are some things that must appear in every data descriptor. Uh, first is the title of the data set. Of course, we need to have that. And then uh, you need to mention the authors or the creators of the data and their affiliations. Then uh, an abstract, which of course will be a brief, but uh, as, uh, a clear um, uh, description of uh, what, what is contained. And then we go to the uh, background, which is more detailed. And then you also need to describe the methods of data collection. Maybe you used a census, used a sample survey, uh, you, you use a quant uh, qualitative uh, data collection method. So we, you need to mention that. And then uh, data record, uh, so all, all, all data sets, all data sets or all data records must be mentioned and you need to, uh, to also describe where one may uh, get these if, uh, if, if, if at all they need them. So that, that is very important and uh, so they must be properly cited. And then uh, you also need to mention if there are any uh, competing interests, conflict of interest. And if at, uh, if at all there are no competing interests, you also need to make a declaration that indeed they don't occur. And then um, of course, just like any other, uh, uh, publication, you need to uh, have a section on references where you need to cite all the works that you have uh, uh, mentioned or cited in your work or in the paper. And then um, here I do give examples of uh, uh, repositories that are relevant for social science, science data and thus PEP data. So uh, this, this, these are uh, just uh, examples of what is available. We have the Dryad Digital Repository. We have Figshare by Springer Nature. We have the Harvard Dataverse. We have the Open Science Framework. We have the Zenodo. We have Medley Data. And uh, what I can say is that uh, the differences in these repositories uh, usually uh, are the the costs and the size limits, as you can see, um, they have different requirements. Uh, repositories such as Open Science Framework and Zenodo are cost-free repositories. Uh, but then you need to go beyond that. There could, uh, other be, there could be other factors uh, for consideration, such as if uh, the data repository assigns what we refer to as uh, the persistent and unique identifiers. You may also need to check, uh, you know, the usefulness and the reliability of the review process, uh, such kind of factors. And then uh, for data journals, I've also given some examples of what is available, especially for social science data and thus web data sets. We have the Journal of Open Humanities Data. We have the Scientific Data, Elsevier by Data in Brief, and then uh, Jan, Journal of Big Data. As I said, uh, they all uh, ask for different uh, charges and uh, uh, size limits 
for your paper and data. Uh, yeah, and uh, they also differ in, in other factors such as the review turnaround. And so uh, when you come to selecting um, the journal you want to publish with, you may want to take uh, such factors into consideration. And then um, just like for uh, literature publications, it's, it's very, very important to cite and reference uh, data. Uh, it's very important because it provides credit to those who created or generated the data set. It also supports uh, reproducibility and uh, reuse by other uh, researchers or others within the research community and also increases the citation uh, rate of the paper. And actually uh, there's some evidence that um, uh, citing your data could uh, lead to increase in the citation rate of your paper. And then uh, different journals uh, adopt uh, different uh, data referencing style. This, uh, what I have given here is an example uh, of a reference, uh, referencing uh, style that uh, is used by Fixture by, uh, Fixture by uh, Springer Nature, the data, or the data uh, repository that we published our PEP uh, work uh, with. But uh, as I said, uh, different data journals, different data repositories have their own standardized uh, referencing styles, which, which you need to comply to. And then uh, finally, uh, you, you need to track reuse of your data through what we refer to as uh, impact metrics or the usage statistics and some of the impact metrics that we use uh, to track reuse of data include uh, the times the number of times that uh, the data has been viewed number of times that the data has been downloaded uh, you could also have a number of uh, citations uh, you know appearances in newspaper articles and uh, policies uh, referencing your data. So those are some of the impact metrics we have, but there are others. And uh, once, or if you visited any data repository or any data journal, you will find these metrics. For example, uh, if you publish with a data journal, you publish or you deposit your data in a data repository, you'll be able to see uh, uh, some of these uh, metrics. You'll be able to know how, uh, uh, how you are the, the, uh, the usage of your data by others is. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, for your presentation. Um, we now open um, the room for questions. You can use the Q&A uh, box or, or the chat box, uh, whatever you prefer. Um, so any questions that you have, please share them with us. I have a question on when you have different versions uh, of the same database. So if you, for example, update the database, how would be the best way to do it? Just to overwrite it or to uh, maybe create different versions of the same database? All right, for data that has already been deposited in a, in a data repository, is that so? Is that your question? My question is, is if, if you have, uh, it doesn't matter where you have it, it's, uh, if you have different versions, you, you keep updating, for example, you, you have a database on, on policy and you update uh, every now and then uh, the type of policy that uh, countries apply. So how, what would be the best? Because people usually, you know, like cite different versions and, you know, just to make things um, clear and make sure that uh, people are citing the latest version or the correct version or I don't know, that's uh, maybe uh, difficult to manage. 
Yes, you need uh, to share any updates uh, regarding your data sets with uh, the repository or the, the journal uh, where you have published or deposited your data sets. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Good, thanks. Um, Bakar, Bakar uh, uh, um, has a question. Uh, what are the costs associated with a CC Creative Commons license? Uh, usually, um, uh, they are available. They are available free of charge. But uh, then uh, you realize that uh, if you are uh, depositing your data in a data repository or publishing with that data journal, uh, they are going to include that as part of what they refer to as the article processing or the publishing charges. But uh, if if you're asking about getting these licensing only, they are, they are freely availed by uh, the, the American uh, nonprofit um, uh, creative commons. Great. So, uh, I don't understand the question that is uh, being asked uh, in the in the Q and A. Says who are the main targets? I don't know uh, what it refers to. Um, maybe you, Michael, can <laughs> interpret that question. Okay, it's in the Q Q and A. Yes. Of the chat? Yeah, it just says that. Who is the main target? Uh, of, uh, uh, for the other question, uh, the recording will be shared, uh, and with the recording, you will have access to, to the slides. Okay. But I don't understand the tar okay. target okay. question. Yeah, yeah. A and uh, maybe to, to mention that um, some time back, um, we prepared a guide on uh, these principles of uh, open data sharing, and uh, you can get a copy of that, or you can uh, you can read the guide on the PEP website. Yeah, as I said, you just need to tab on uh, publications, uh, data sets, and uh, you'll view some of the data that have been uh, deposited or published in the PEP institutional repository and uh, they are in you will also find the guide great so jenny um says that there is a guide to data publishing on the data sets web page uh, from pep so it would be good to check yeah. that yeah. as well. Yeah, in case you're interested in knowing uh, the costs levied by uh, various uh, uh, data repositories and data journals that we have mentioned. Sorry. So I don't know, maybe the presentation was clear enough. Um, what's the link? Great. So we have lots of resources for data publishing now. Any further questions, comments, experiences you want to share maybe? And, and maybe just to add, uh, if, if at all you are interested in 
publishing data that you collected as part of your PEP project, you may get in touch with me. Yeah, I'll give, I can give some uh, further uh, guidance regarding uh, the entire process and maybe um, address any comments, any issues that you may be having. Thanks. Same for other data sets. So I will copy your email just in case. It's this one, right? Yes. Great. Great. So I don't know, maybe. We can ask people for questions one more time, and if not, we can wrap up and finish the session. So oh, there's a question uh, here. It says, are there uh, privileges for researchers coming from other developing countries for accessing data or metadata? Sorry? In the Q&I, we have a question. If uh, people from uh, under developing countries have uh, any preferential access to data? Uh, uh, no, for, for PEP data, for PEP data, it's freely avail available to any researcher from whatever part of the world. So you just need to go to the, uh, to the PEP website, you access the, the PEP uh, data repository. Um, as I said before, you expect it to fill a form, a, re a data request form, and then you submit it to us. And uh, after that, uh, we are going to give you the data. And if at all, uh, your request is not approved, we are going to uh, tell you the reasons as to why uh, your request was declined. Have another question. Must the project to be evaluated be a new project considering the use of RCT? Yes, uh, any data irrespective of uh, the methodology uh, through which uh, or by which the data was collected is publishable. Uh, but, but then uh, you realize that um, uh, uh, there, there are actually some rules that guide that. For example, for RCT, you cannot publish data if the project is not complete. Like you can't collect baseline data and you decide to, pub to, to publish that. You have to wait until the project is complete. And usually uh, whoever is funding the research project would require you to, you know, to, uh, to, to agree to such terms. Okay, thank you everybody for joining today. Uh, thank you, Michael, for your presentation. Um, uh, yeah, well, the question is not clear as well. I'm sorry, the, the person that is typing the question, the Q&I. Um, uh, 
we are not sure if you're referring to the uh, current open call for expression of interest or what are you referring to? So if you can clarify. There's a seminar um, on, on about the, the ongoing call of expression of interest uh, that is taking place tomorrow. Uh, and Jeannie has shared the link. We can, we can copy that in the chat box so everybody can have access to it. Let's see. So that's the, um, uh, the webinar that is taking place tomorrow. I'm not sure, Michael or Jenny, if you understand the question, I'm not following it, I'm sorry. Maybe it has to do with, um, with uh, some program that this person is um, related to. So I don't know, maybe you can, you can uh, write your question by email uh, and try to be more specific about the details of it. And, and we, can, we can answer, uh, we can provide a, a a complete answer by email, um, and we can we can finish the seminar uh, at this moment. So thank you everybody for joining, and um, I hope to see you uh, in the next webinar that is it's going to take place in two weeks. Uh, so um, enjoy the rest of your day, and um, thank you again for for joining us.